Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. This is a question and answer session for March 26th. Public Health Director Annette Rodriguez and Dr. Chris Bird are going to be addressing questions received this week. Please feel free to add your follow-up questions to chat. In Texas, after this Monday, every adult over the age of 18 is eligible for the vaccine. Today's topics are going to be vaccine eligibility and registration, children and COVID, and our weekly healthy lifestyle check-in. Dr. Bird. Thanks, Jason. So, Annette, you want to give us an update on the vaccination progress this week and how it's been going? Yes. Um, so we've been going fast and furious. You know, we've been really busy uh, vaccinating people. We actually changed what the the process on how we do things uh, on Tuesday at Richard Borchard Fairgrounds. We changed to a hybrid. And the reason we did that was because um, two reasons. One is that we needed to prepare for inclement weather. And we thought that there was going to be some rain. So we're already thinking about how are we going to change to do uh, more indoors than outdoors. And the other reason was because staff was uh, uh, extremely hot uh, one day on Tuesday. I think it went up to 82 degrees, which doesn't sound very hot. But when you're out in the pavement um, and that's reflecting on you and you've got all these motors running, it gets really hot. And so um, for safety reasons, we went to a hybrid. And so the hybrid is that we actually did some, we we're allowing some people to drive through and some to walk through. And so we wanted to have them both at the same time so that way we could uh, rotate staff from outside to inside. But unfortunately, everybody decided they loved the drive-through and nobody wanted to walk in because it was so hot, you know, for them to have to walk as well. So on Wednesday, we went to a complete walk-through only. And I just want to say it went amazingly well, better than I even anticipated. So what we did was we opened both show bars and both of them were completely outfitted exactly the same. They had vaccination tables enough for, you know, 25, 30 vaccinators in both show bars, and they had chairs for waiting. But what we did was we actually vaccinated before we registered you. So we vaccinated you as soon as you walked in, and then you went to sit and wait, and that's kind of dead time. You know, you're just waiting 15 minutes before you can leave. So during that downtime, we registered people, we gave them their vaccination card, Four or five minutes, six minutes later, they were good to leave and they walked right out, you know, the, the show bar doors. So we actually ramped up to over a thousand an hour when normally we do six, seven hundred an hour with the drive through and it works very well. Mm -hmm. But this was a thousand and everybody got to come in. So it, 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 it's much better. It's much faster. We got a lot of compliments from a lot of the individuals that were older individuals that thought that they were going to need their walkers. They didn't need that, but we had wheelchairs as well, just to make sure if people needed help, we could help get them to the vaccination site and to the wait area. So I just wanted to assure people that I know you might think oh, it sounds bad, we have to walk in. It's actually very, very quick. As soon as those garage doors open, you walk straight to a vaccinator, you get vaccinated, and then you just sit and wait. And we just keep moving like that. I think really where we started getting bogged down was the 15 minute wait. People were sitting there 20, 25 minutes. They were so relaxed and on their phones. <laughs> we were like, okay, it's time to yeah, go. Yeah, time to go. You've got to go now. So, yeah, so more people could come in. And we still were trying to schedule people. But anyway, I just wanted to reassure the community that it's a system and it works well. So please at least give it a try before you say, no, 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 I want to do the whole drive through process. But what we do as well is in the afternoon after the clinic is over, we allow at least an hour or two uh, for people with mobility concerns. We open up the drive through mechanism because if you truly are struggling to walk, then we'll just take care of you and your vehicle. And so you can come in through those means as well. So. All right. Well, thank you for all your efforts on that and the whole team. I, when I went through the drive through, I found it to be like there was a high level of organization that had to occur to make it go as efficiently as it did. And it sounds like you guys were able to improvise pretty quickly and make the indoors uh, process work well. Yes. All right. So uh, let's say I'm over 80 years old. Do I need a vaccine appointment? Uh, and will I have to wait in line? 
so you should register and if you don't if you can't register if you don't have a computer or you don't even know how to use the computer you can just call us at 561-1101 and we'll register you for you and so you'll be registered so once you're registered the nice thing about being registered is that we like to give all the uh, elderly people priority and so they come in first you know so they don't have to be worried with all the different traffic flows and stuff we try to get everybody that's older uh, um, um, an appointment early and so that way they're the first ones there and we can take care of them first and then we can get them out as well and so uh, but if you don't have an appointment what I'm going to say is next week our goal is just to vaccinate as many people as possible uh, like Jason mentioned starting on Monday the state put out um, their new recommendations is that any adult you know um, regardless of your occupation or your health status you're able to get vaccinated and so you don't have to worry about oh i have this comorbidity or i have this or i don't have this don't worry about it if you're an adult uh 18 years or older for pfizer 16 and 17 years as well you can get vaccinated so so please come and get vaccinated so not only are we asking you to register through the website or by calling us but if you can't do either of those you could just come to the clinic and we'll help you register there and we'll get you vaccinated because it's more important for us to get you vaccinated than to deal with all of the paperwork so but we do need the paperwork because we want to make sure that you have the documentation that you need saying that you were vaccinated okay sounds good um can i register for the vaccine today if i won't be eligible in texas until monday absolutely yes and we're encouraging you you know we know that we're going to get more vaccines the state's telling us very clearly be ready those these doses are going to increase very quickly and so we're asking we're really pleading to the community to register you know if you register you make everything go so much faster but again if you can't register we'll still uh, vaccinate you but yes you can register right now for next week so next week what we're planning to do on monday is we're going to do the American Bank Center and we're going to do a walkthrough. You're going to come in and walk through and get vaccinated. And then uh, we're opening it up to 8,000 people. So normally we do about 5,000 first doses uh, at the beginning of the week. This week we're opening it up to 8,000 first doses on Monday. And we're going to be there to at least 6 p.m. So there should be no reason why you can't get vaccinated. Come through, walk in. We'll help you. We'll get you vaccinated. Wait your 15 minutes and you should be ready to go. All right. That sounds good. Um, let's see. Topic three on children. Will, uh, with three children yes. hospitalized for COVID. It might be off air. Is it back on? Sorry. Okay. Uh, I've got an error. Let's roll then. It says unspecified error while That's recording. Specific. We're still on Facebook, like but YouTube Thank you. might okay. have gone down. I'll upload that. YouTube back up. Okay. AV team has uh, put us back into place. And okay, the next topic. With three children hospitalized for COVID-19 in Nueces County, how does this compare to hospitalizations from the past year? You know, so at the beginning of our COVID pandemic uh, for Noises County, and we all know we had our first case in March of 2020 here in Noises County. So at the beginning, we didn't see children hospitalized, very few children, if anything. And then as more and more cases started to increase in Noises County, we did see that some children were actually hospitalized at Driscoll Children's Hospital. So um, then we started seeing that we're kind of going back on a decline. As we decline, those hospitalizations for Driscoll Children's Hospital declined to zero. So we've been at zero over the last, at least, at least the last month, probably even longer. So yesterday when I saw three children hospitalized in Driscoll Children's Hospital, I knew what was happening. We're starting to see an increase again in our COVID cases. And as we start seeing those increases, whether it's from spring break or for, for whatever reason, you know, uh, whether it's because of the variants that we're seeing in our community, uh, we're seeing increases. And now when you see increases in cases, you also see increases in children getting COVID-19. And some of those children are so sick that they end up having to be hospitalized. So that's very worrisome for all of us. And so we really want to remind everybody to continue to practice your public health strategies, wearing your mask 
social distancing, washing your hands as often as possible, and not touching your eyes, nose, and mouth, uh, especially if your hands are dirty. And if you're not sure, wash them first. You know, I see kids that move their contacts around or take their contacts out. That's a really good, easy way to infect yourself if you come in contact with COVID-19. Okay. Yeah, hopefully uh, this passes and uh, we won't have any children in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So um, each uh, week we talk about uh, Annette and my struggle to get back into shape uh, after a year of COVID. I think everybody has heard that for every month of COVID, the average American has gained two pounds. Um, and I don't know. I'm not going to do the math in my head right now. I might have gained a little more. I'm not sure. Uh, but um, my my update is that from the beginning of the year, I've lost 13 pounds. I'm below the BMI of 30. Just barely. Wow. Wonderful. <laughs> so, Good for you. Uh, that's that's going pretty well. But the, you know the semester is getting pretty hot and heavy, and so. Uh, there wasn't a lot of exercising going on this week, but I was able to maintain. So hopefully that'll continue. How, how, how about you, Annette? So I gained six pounds during the COVID year, and I have not been able to budge and get rid of those pounds. But I'm just staying consistent. I'm still just uh, slowly getting back into it. I, I remind myself every morning, it took me a year to gain those six pounds. You know, it may take me a year to get rid of those six pounds. So I am still trying to do push-ups, you know as hard as it, as it is, but I, this helps me because last night I was thinking, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it, I thought I have to do it. Dr. Bird's going to ask me, you yeah. know, have you exercised? So, and I do try to do it every day. I've only missed one day this week, but I only did, I think, 20, maybe 30 push-ups yesterday. My arms were hurting. I was just so tired. We've been doing drive throughs every day. You would think doing a drive through you would lose weight, but you know, um, it, it doesn't work that way. You still have to put effort into it. You still have to exercise. You still have to get the right hours of sleep, and you still have to eat well. And so eating well still hasn't come yet for me. I'm trying to exercise, and I know that I need to eat well, so I'm getting there. I'm mentally, I have to be prepared to get there. And so I'm going to get there. I just, you know, I just need to keep pushing forward. All right. You know, something that I noticed when COVID first hit was there was more people walking around my neighborhood than I'd ever seen. But... What's kind of happened is it slowly regressed back to the way that it was before COVID started. And I know, like, just for myself, it's pretty, you know, when you get real busy with, with life, sometimes it's hard to carve out that time. And so uh, it's important to, to try to do that. I think, you know, Nat, you can correct me where I'm wrong here, but I think doctors recommend at least, you know, three days, 30 minutes of exercise per week to try to maintain a, a healthy lifestyle. Absolutely. And, you know, um, um, you know, I try to do just 20 minutes. I always tell myself mentally if I could just do 20 minutes. But I think the other part is that we're out of our, our natural realm, you know, at least for public health. We used to have a kind of a routine, a pattern, if you will. And in that routine, I had uh, built in exercise. At noontime, we would do something here at, at the health department. We would do volleyball or we would do getting ready for beach to bay so we practice you know getting uh you know running and those types of things at noon and so without having that anymore you know it's hard for me like you have biking and so you still you can bicycle you know in front of your tv and you could do all those things i've never done any of those things so my schedules are really thrown off i get home really late my legs are really exhausted at that point and my mom used to say don't sit down because once you sit down you're probably not going to get up <laughs> And I know exactly what she means because if I sit down, that's it, it's over. So anyway, so it's actually, you know, uh, working it back into your normal everyday routine. If you can work it out into your normal everyday routine, it would just become a habit after a while. But I haven't gotten to that point yet. Okay, well, thanks for sharing. Uh, let's see, let's go to the questions from the audience with Tiffany and Jason. currently. Tiffany, you had asked me one about uh, somebody from Port A. Yes. And I think the question was that they wanted to wait for the Johnson & Johnson. Is that correct? Right. So if someone wants to hold out for Johnson & Johnson to just get one shot instead of the two shots from Pfizer or Moderna. 
You know, and I've heard a lot of people say that, and I mean, I guess if you consider yourself very lucky, the problem that we've seen is while people are waiting for Johnson & Johnson, I think everybody knows the supplies basically ran out of Johnson & Johnson, and they're ramping back up, and we're, so we should be seeing some Johnson & Johnson back in our community next week, if not for sure the first week in April. But while they're waiting for a shot or a particular Pfizer versus Moderna, they actually get COVID-19. And then they want to kick themselves because they're like, I could have just gotten the shot. I could have had some protection. You know, I don't know what I was thinking. So I would encourage you if you're somewhere and they're offering shots, especially like us at the end of the clinic, we may have 100 or 40 or 60 or whatever vaccines that we need to put in arms. If you're one of those people and we're there like outside of Walmart, please get the shot when we have them there because we don't want to waste them. And it is really good protection for you, especially as we're going into the Easter uh, celebrations next week. Yep, and the the less we wait to get the shots, the quicker this is over. Yes, exactly. So how are we looking, Dr. Bird, on transmission rate? Uh, you know, I haven't updated the numbers for this week yet. As okay. I said, the semester is getting hot and heavy. And... Uh, <laughs> I've, I've spent my time this morning working on a student's master's thesis and getting that sent out to their committee. So, but okay, well, I will, I will, I will have that report you. this afternoon for the community for sure. Okay, thank you. All right, well, I wanna thank everyone for watching, especially if you submitted a question in the Q and A.